Welcome to the coolest stuff on the planet. Well, hey there, everybody. Welcome to the podcast. This is a podcast we like to call the coolest stuff on the planet. And I'm one of your hosts, Rachel. And sitting there across from me, looking puzzled, is... Matthew. Hello. (laughs) Hello. Today, we're checking out the Spanish Steps, a famous staircase located two kilometers due east of Vatican City. That's 1.3-ish miles in the Piazza di Spagna in Rome. I have to say the first thing I, when I was researching these uh, steps, the first thing I noticed was that they have a bit of an identity crisis. That's right. Um, because they're in Rome, mm-hmm. but... Well, the Spanish steps were designed by an Italian. They were commissioned by the French, but they take their name from the nearby Spanish embassy to the Vatican. Mm-hmm. So they're a little multicultural there. Yeah. And um, even um, the square that Matt mentioned, he's, I think you called it the, the Italian name, correct? The Piazza di Spagna. Yeah. The Spanish square also takes its name from the Spanish embassy, which is located on the square and mm-hmm. has been for many centuries. So the Spanish steps were constructed from 1723 until 1726. And both tourists and locals frequent the steps. And its popularity, it's just, it's gotten more and more popular. And um, with thousands of people visiting these steps, there are some problems that may arise. Mm -hmm. So not unlike um, their famous counterpart, which we mentioned in a previous podcast, the Trevi Fountain, Mm -hmm. the Spanish steps have also been subject to vandalism. So in 2008, um, the same guy who put red dye in the Trevi Fountain also put hundreds of thousands of... This is so funny. Of brightly colored balls, like bouncy mm-hmm. balls, I guess, mm-hmm. um, right on the steps. Yeah. I, there are pictures of this. You can find them all over the internet. Check it out. It's I, I think it's kind of funny. And now it's time for some rapid facts. There are 138 steps within the Spanish steps. Two. That was the first fact. This is the second all one. All right. I'm ready for it. Italian artist Francesco de Sanctis designed the steps in the Baroque style at the request of Pope Innocent XII. So the steps were built to bridge the, the incline between the lower plaza and the upper plaza. And the upper plaza is home to this famous French church called the Trinita de Monti. And so they were basically built by the French, as we mentioned, mm-hmm. to sort as sort of like a, a beautiful ascension to this Um, kind of draw your eye to this French church up at the top. So the steps are a great place to just hang out and people watch. And that's actually my wife's favorite pastime of all time is just to sit and watch people. It seems like it'd be a great place for that. Exactly. And not only because of the high volume, you got foot traffic all over the place, tons of people from all kinds of different places. Uh, But because for some reason, steps tend to attract interesting and artistic people. Mm -hmm. Do, uh, Do you know of any, Rachel? Yes. In fact, I do, Matt. Yeah? Apparently, um, in the centuries after the steps were built, muses or figure models, I guess you'd call them today, would strategically hang out on the steps in hopes that artists would come by and choose them for their for their works. Interesting. So they'd just be hanging out like, hey, I'd look good in a painting. <laughs> you know? <laughs> That's great. I'm sure the steps are probably very nice to visit all year round, but... According to many accounts, spring is a wonderful time to see them because the um, staircases are all covered with flowers in bloom. Mm -hmm. And it's supposed to be very pretty. Gorgeous as it is. Uh, Indeed. And Rachel... Oh! What was that? Did you hear that? Wow. Uh, Sorry. I think our editor, Casey, is telling us to wrap it up. Jeez, that was loud and in my face. What was that? (laughs) It sounded like he hit you in the head. Did he smack you or something? That's exactly what it sounded like. Ah, well. <clears throat> All right. Well, if we got to go, we got to go. Yeah. That's the Spanish Steps. And um, they are very pretty. And you should go check them out in Rome. And um, I guess that leads to human mail. Oh, yes. I have some excellent human mail here. This is from Matt. Well, we will. This is not me. You Matt. didn't, you didn't nope. email in. Well, <clears throat> not this time. So uh, it says, Rachel and Matt, I just wanted to send you a note and thank you for the coolest stuff on the planet podcast. Thank you, Matt. Uh, I've really enjoyed using your podcast to teach my children about all the places you've covered. Oh, dear. (laughs) (laughs) I hope we've been 
appropriate. Well, well, he says, he says, the best part for me as a parent is that they don't realize that they're learning because they enjoy it so much. He says, my children, Ava and Brady, are probably a little younger than your normal audience because they are six and three. Aw. Which is really cute. That's sweet. Um, I've used it periodically on my iPad as a bedtime story. <laughs> that's wow, so cool. that's awesome mm-hmm. and scary. Um, I will try to be <laughs> nicer and what uh, less vulgar, I guess. PG. We'll keep it PG. Yeah. That's, now that's that good. we know that the kitties are listening. Anyway, I just want to say thanks, and I've really enjoyed watching my kids get excited about learning through your podcast, and I just want you to know. Very nice. That's awesome. Thank you, Matt. That's why we do what we do. That's right. So, um, yeah. So thanks for writing in, Matt. Yeah. And uh, thanks for listening, everybody. And we'll see you next time for more cool stuff, dudes. Boom. For more on this and thousands of other topics, visit HowStuffWorks.com. And let us know what you think. Email travelpodcast at HowStuffWorks.com. Don't forget to check out our other podcasts free on iTunes.